Now let's see, do I want to go... Nope. Do I maybe want to go over to... Hmm, no, not really. What about if I shoot like this here? Hmm, maybe not. Ah, uh, there's just so many different ways that I can just compose out how I look in this, in this video. Let's talk about them. Well, what about you guys? How's it going? Hope you're all keeping well today. Hope everything is good with you. Are. Hope you're all keeping safe and I hope you're all keeping healthy. Just wanted to take the time just to thank everybody who took part in my Instagram story where I did a vote as to what video I should do next. I had two options available. The other was a basics of Lightroom against this video in particular. And I was actually quite surprised that this video won the vote. So thanks very much everybody for taking part and for sharing what you would like to see next. And of course, if you are not following me on my Instagram, then please hit the links down below. Come and say hi, give us a wee follow and share some love. So in photography, especially when you're starting off, you hear so much being thrown at you like aperture, shutter speed, exposure, time, f-stops, buttons, switches, dials, things on the screen that you've never seen before. And it can get so confusing and scary. And that's all understandable, but it's, while it's great to know about what settings and all like that are, what really separates your photography from somebody else's photography is composition. And composition is literally just how you plan to set out your photograph. Where do you want your subject to be? How far back? How far forward? Do you want it over there? Do you want it over there? Do you want it behind? It, that is literally all it is because the way we see photographs are all different amongst each other. I could see one thing, you could see another thing and it's all about compositions. I just wanted to share just sort of some of my own personal favourite composition tips and how they can really help you up your photography game. But of course before I do that, if you really are into photography and you want to hear more different sort of photography topics and tutorials and all, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon down below. Every single subscribe and love that is shared to the channel means I get to pump out more content. So the first tip I want to give you on how you can up your composition game is just move. That, that's literally all it is. Just move yourself. If you see something and you go, hmm, maybe I want to see what that looks like a lot closer. Move closer. Or that looks far too close. I want to see what it looks like further back. Shoot it further back. Just move about. You'll see, <laughs> you'll see photographers out and about just moving their tripods or moving themselves, acting like grasshoppers or <laughs> different sort of positions. But that's because they're all just trying to get the perfect composition, how they can see where their subject is going to sit in the frame. And all it is is just you moving about. Next one I want to talk about in regards to composition, you probably might have heard this term before, and that is messing about with your rule of thirds. He's talking about photography rules. Oh no, I'm going to get scared. There's rules to follow. And oh, how am I going to mess this up? <laughs> just calm your wee self down, love, all right? So whenever you hear things like rule of thirds, it doesn't actually mean you have to follow this rule in regards to composition. No, rule of thirds is just a term that's used for a certain part of composition. And all that is is just how things sit within a frame. If you use things like your live view or anything, the likes of mirrorless cameras especially, where you can use the screen or electronic viewfinder, you can turn on a, a little grid that looks like some boxes you'll see this if you're playing about with cropping if you're editing your photos after even your phone has this as well you can show the grid of your rule of thirds all it is is just you have a third 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 and the same again on the other orientation so take a look at this shot here this was taken up at Stormont at the beginning of the year and you can see how well proportioned this frame is and the first third we have the sky itself we have that gorgeous sunset in the middle, we sort of have a bit more of the sky, but more of the statue coming into play. And then in the last third, we have the street, we have the lights all in play. But you can also notice the golden points starting to hit up here where there's a line that's sitting perfectly for where the sky is sitting. You also have corners sitting on the lamppost. So all this is is just how you want to proportion out your image. There's just, you know, it, although it's called a rule, doesn't necessarily mean you have to follow it, but it's probably one of the most common 
uh, use techniques when it comes to building up your composition. So the next tip I want to give you in regards to building up your composition is change your perspective. So this is similar to the first one where it's all about moving about, but rather than going forwards, backwards, left and right and all, try shooting something up above, like at a bit of a bird's eye view, or go down low, shoot low down. If you see like this photograph here taken in my hometown of Lisbon, I shot this way low down. I pretty much had the camera touching the ground and it just changes your perspective. It makes everything look taller and bigger and a bit more city-like. So even if you have a camera, most cameras these days have like pull out and flippable screens like this one does. If I shift that out of the way, I can flip this all the way around. So I can still see everything that I'm doing or if I'm shooting from up above, I can still see everything that I'm doing, shooting down below. So that way I don't have to <laughs> hurt my knees or my back or anything. My Sony camera has a pull out screen so I can still see everything that I'm doing. So try setting your camera down onto the ground and just taking a photograph and seeing what sort of a perspective that has. Like especially if you're in a town or a city, get down quite low. And if there's a lot of hustle and bustle going around, so you see all the feet and everything. So yeah, just, just change your perspective because what you see and what everybody else sees will be completely different. What you also wanna do when you're out taking photographs, whether you're in a building, out in the street or anything, is look for leading lines. And this is where, if you see things like a path or walls or something that are just like you're walking towards something, Use that to your advantage and use it to help bring your photograph to life. Because say, for example, this photograph here of St. Anne's Cathedral, you can see there's a lot of lines in this photo. We have it in the pillars, we have it from the pews, all the way leading up to the back. Because that's where our eye is being drawn. We're being drawn to the door at the back. But while we're looking at this photo, we're being led along into it. So you're following along with the chairs, you're following along with the person. It's almost making it look like we're actually there and we're being led along, like we're actually at a church service and we're just being led straight to the door where all that light and all like that is happening. But yet at the same time, this is just a photograph. I mean, like I'm sitting here saying, you know, a photograph is making it seem like I'm actually in the church, but that's how leading lines can really get your audience to look at your photographs a lot closer. A lot of architecture, street, city photography is really ideal place to practice your leading lines. So that way when you take a photograph, like if you're changing your perspective, shooting no down with all those lines, it's all about getting your audience to engage into your photo rather than just going, yep, that's a photo of street, walk on to the next photo. They'll actually sit and go, oh yeah, look at that and look at that over there. So leaning lines will really help bring your audience into your photograph. So sit and look out for these lines and especially if there's a lot of symmetry or anything like that going on so that you can balance them out too. So yeah, leading lines really sit and look out for these so they can help proportionate your image and lead your audience into your photograph in a way that they wouldn't see it otherwise. So my last tip, and this is probably one of the most popular and my own personal favorite composition tips is take your subject off the center. You will not believe how much you can change your photograph just by taking your foot, your subject, whether it's a model or whether it's like an object or anything like that and just pushing it off to the side because there is nothing wrong with having negative space. I mean, yeah, sure, it looks good having yourself or your model bang on into the middle and you get all the background now, but you never know what is actually going on either side even if it's just blank it could actually look really cool and create a lot more depth to your shot so what i love to do when it comes to my concert photography is i love to go to one side of the pit the furthest side that i can and i love to push the band off to the side so that way i can also then get the crowd into another part of the shot so i also then have a bit of rule of thirds going on there too because i have band photo pit and whatever else is going on here and then audience but it shows that the band isn't the main focus because yes, the band would certainly be the main focus. 
your audience will also be attracted to oh what's going on there in the crowd there's a lot of happiness there's a lot of head banging and activity going on there too so even outside of concert photography have a look at this shot this is of Musenden Temple of the north coast of Northern Ireland so first I have a shot here taken bang on in the centre and don't get me wrong this is a gorgeous photograph we have really nice detail going on here Musenden is the main focus but watch what happens when I moved and pushed Musenden off to the side now have a look, we have so much more drama going on in this photograph because yes we have Musenden Temple up here in the top left hand corner but we're also bringing in the wall and the grass, the fields but we also have all the drama that's going on from the north coast sea so yes Musenden is the main focus, there is so much more going on in this photograph that is just bringing a lot of attention that will draw your audience in as well so see what a difference with having the temple in the center to pushing it off to the side and all that took was for me to just move like I said at the start of the video was just moving around to the side and pushing it away and you know there's loads of different things you can do to help up your composition game but this is just my own personal favorites and some that I have used throughout my years but this is really what ups your photography game yeah sure it's great to get lost in settings and buttons and dials and all but what really separates your photograph from somebody else's is how you compose it we all see things completely differently we could be standing in the exact same location shooting the exact same thing but you'll see something different to what I will do. So I do hope this video was helpful for you guys. If it has been, or if you have any different sort of composition techniques that you use personally, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what all you like to do whenever you go out and take photographs. And also don't be afraid to like, share, subscribe, hit that wee bell icon so you can stay up to date with future videos. Again, I'm always very grateful for you guys coming and checking out the content. It's always very greatly appreciated. But until then everyone, please take care, be safe and enjoy the rest of your day.